What's up, what's up? This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris. This is my man. DJ Mike LV. And we got a very amazing, special guest in the building. This is more like a brother of mine. Facts. We go back, it's been four or five years now. Dang. What are we in, 2023? Bro, it's been about five and a half years. Jeez. Jeez. Yo, I, I want everybody to give a warm welcome wherever you're at, driving around your cars, watching online, whatever, to Mr. Christopher Hovey. Yeah. Hovey in the building. Yeah. One yeah. Was six life was good. It was good. Hovey, baby. Got the Georgia Bulldogs on. Yo, Yo Hovey's Reference. Atlanta through and through, bro. I ain't gonna lie, he is. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, he, I'll say Georgia, you know, Brunswick. I stay rocking yeah. the Georgia gear, man. From Love Braves, it. Atlanta dogs. Braves, Dogs, Falcons. That's real. All of it, bro. And yeah, you, you like a real fan. Like, you actually watched, like, I, watched I, I, I remember doing the, the, the Bulldogs game. You were, like, always tweeting and, like, tapping in. Yeah. Let's go, dogs. <laughs> go, dogs. You got to say it like. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say, bro, the fans you gotta say it with that Georgia <laughs> slang. <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie, them Georgia Bulldogs fans it's is like, it's, it's, like a, it's like a cult religion, slow, yeah. low key. Yeah, oh, for sure. I'd be having to like, yeah, bro. Literally, it was yeah. one of the things that I had to like figure out how to let go. Oh, for real? Yeah, <laughs> like, boy, has an idol. He got saved and he had that to like, was let an idol, go. Bro. <laughs> I was convicted about the Georgia Bulldogs. Come man, on, bro. Man, it's, it's like a real thing. Like, I, man, one of my homies who played at Georgia, man, he was like, man, he was like, the deeper he got into, he was like, yo, people had like shrines at their house, bro. bro oh, like nah. temples. I, they, call, <laughs> they call my granddad Bulldog Berry. Like, it's, Bulldog it's like Berry, that. double beat up. <laughs> yo, it's Bulldog like Berry that. sound like a name. That sounds like, like a wrestler, bro. <laughs> bro, yeah. But man. like, he low key, like, it makes him a legend. You know what I mean? Dang. But yeah, yeah that's dope, man. Yeah, it's, I feel like, so yeah, man, welcome, Hovey, man. It's It's been, man, I, I feel like we we got so much to dive into, man. Like, I mean, I like this is like bro conversations for real, for real. Because let's be, start on a on a light note, and then ahead. as as we yeah. as we go on, congratulations on being a new father, uh, boys and dad. You. Thank you. How's that bro. been for you, bro? Like, what's tell me one thing that you have learned as being a father that you didn't know before being a dad. Man, I think commitment, mm. like just. Showing up every day, being willing to change his diapers and mm. um, being able to help Rach with, you know, little stuff like washing the dishes or whatever these things are. Like, man, it takes commitment, like the little things. And and um, feeling really stretched and feeling like it's challenged me and showed me some laziness. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, shoot, I really do sometimes just sit on the couch. Like, you don't realize how much, like, idle time, idle time you got, you know what I'm saying, until... So you have a jit, and it's like, oh wow. So bro, jit always feels like a derogatory term. I don't know why. <laughs> I know, I know. Coming from New York, bro, when I heard that, I was like, it's like a southern. Can you thing, say that? And then I'm for like, us, was, for me, from, from bro, from the from South of Georgia, it's the complete opposite. So bro, I got a jit. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, that's interesting, bro. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your New York. Nah, feelings, nah, nah, bro. nah, not at all. It's just it's coming from New York. It's nah. just wild to hear that. It's just it was a crazy never heard before. I feel like now was, I know what it means. I thought it was so. a song. Release from us that had little jit, and every time it, it was, oh, yeah, yeah. I think, well, it was an it was a copy project. Every time, legit. I, every time I think it was Andy. Every time I heard it, I just wanted to be like, it sounds like a curse word. Yeah, it's not- no, it sounds like derogatory. <laughs> it sounds like you're just coming at me, Loki. Bro, <laughs> it's like when the crazy says little boy on over the top. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Y'all don't understand. We know what he really wanted to say. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on sure. Y'all don't understand how deep. The South Georgia slang bag really is, bro. It's I, I, it's loaded. I, I need I to get feel you like out there. There's a hard bro. R somewhere in there too. You know what I'm saying? Dang, look yo, at that. <laughs> he knows it's true. <laughs> South Georgia breaks my heart to be honest, bro. Yo, yeah. South Georgia's crazy, bro. Yo, so speaking of South Georgia, bro, I think, I mean, we, I feel like I know you through and through, but I think it'd be good to just yeah. bring people into like your world, like Brunswick, Georgia, growing Wait. up in Brunswick. Wait. Like, tell us where, tell the people like where is it located. What was your upbringing like? Like, bring us right into your world, man. Let's do it. So, um, first of all, thank y'all for having me on this, man. Show, bro, man. I'm excited to that. share this. We hate you. <laughs> this is your show. <laughs> hey, um, man, where do I begin? So, Brunswick, Georgia is in a very deep pocket in the southeast of region of Georgia. So, it's like in this little cove between St. Simon's Island mm. um, and like Savannah, Georgia. So, like, it's really right up on, like, St. Simon's Island and Jekyll Island. People gotcha. know about that. 
Yeah. That's the same kind of uh, area as Brunswick. So it's called the Golden Isles. So the Golden Isles is those three, you know, places. Brunswick, St. Simons, Jekyll. Jekyll Island. Gotcha. So it's like a... It's a community. It's like Outer Banks. She was saying show on Netflix, Outer Banks. It's the same I haven't thing. seen it, but basically, yeah. yeah. I don't watch TV, so I'm out. Sorry. <laughs> I watch basketball. Just what a personality yeah. trait. I don't watch TV, man. I'm too busy. <laughs> what a, a, what a conversation. Uh, <laughs> such a flex, bro. Uh, I don't got time nah, for TV. I, 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 watch, I watch a little TV. Um, I'm but yeah, so with that comes nuances, obviously, because you wouldn't know when you hear that 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 there would be nuance but St. Simons and Jekyll are wealthy areas. Okay. And Brunswick is not a wealthy area. Um, okay. And you wouldn't know that on the surface you'd be like, okay cool, you know, go now is like no, it's very nuanced. Um and so for me growing up um I was more, you know, I was in Brunswick. So I, okay. I you know, I grew up in a trailer um in Brunswick near the countryside of town. Um Still kind of in the city of, of it a little bit, but for the most part, kind of tucked a little, like, you know, in well, the, getting near the country area. Okay. Um, and, man, yeah, we, we ain't we ain't grow up with much. You know, my uh, my parents worked super hard. They would, like, switch um, shifts. So, you know, my mom would man. be home with us, like, taking care of us, and or, you know, they would switch over. It's time. That's what that means. <laughs> um <laughs> Are you good? They would, uh, you know, yeah, they would work really hard. So the, when you say switch shifts, like. So like, not playing? that they were never at home with us at the same time, but like okay. they were working. They were just putting in you work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what was their profession at Man, the time? Going back, I'm trying to remember exactly. My dad, I believe, was doing GED examining. So like he was like helping. Really? Yeah, bro. And then my mom, I believe she was working at Chick-fil-A. Jeez. When I was in a trailer, it's it's so far back, I couldn't really tell you exactly, but I believe she was working at Chick-fil-A. Did you, I have a question, like, at the time in Brunswick, you mentioned it being like the smaller of the three. Uh, did you yeah. know? No, bigger, not the, the, maybe in population, but, but like, okay, I guess the, and, the less and, um, affluent, would you say? Yeah, yep. Did you know? Oh, yeah, you know, shout out, shout out Georgia State University. Um <laughs> Um, did you know, like, your, did you know what you were growing up in or around at the time, or like, not fully? Um, it probably took me until I was what ten, 10. to realize it. So, because um, people don't know, I was born in Jessup, Georgia. Jessup is, and it's about forty-five minutes from Brunswick. Um, my dad grew up there his whole life. When I moved to Brunswick, obviously. I was a baby, right? But like, I don't know, bro. There's a, like Jessup is also another very, you know, country town as well. So there's just a certain cloth that I'm mm, from that's just a gotcha. very from the, stripped down mm. version of, of life. Very simple. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, I, I grew up in that simple life. Didn't have any problem with it. You was, was, was great. good. Great childhood. Yeah, I mean, you know. At the trailer, we had the vents on the floor. It wasn't, <laughs> I, I, you know, to get cool, I'm like, on the floor. Oh, this is great. That's crazy. You know, it ain't, it ain't no AC unit. Like you. Oh, yeah. It ain't, ain't no central you, air. You the rotation AC. game is. Nah. You get an AC from the ground. You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember that, man. And, um, yeah, so it was just what I knew. You know what I mean? And I loved it. I'd ride my bike, you know what I mean, on in, in front of our big yard. Because one thing about growing up, in a trailer is sometimes you can get that big, you get a big yard because the trailer is so small. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? the tra <laughs> you know? Yo, that's crazy. So like, yeah, man, it was just, um, man, honestly, beautiful experience for me as a kid because I didn't know better. But then as I, as I grew older, um, insecurities about how much we made started to creep in because I realized, so let me get some yeah, context. Yeah. Um, my, my parents, they worked at the, in the school system. And they were both para paraprofessionals in the school system. And I realized, oh, we're not like, you know, like a lot of people that live on the island or whatever. Like we're even at maybe at some people in my school. Because like when you work in a school system, people think there's all this money in it. And it's not. You're really serving. Like you laying yeah, yourself nah, down to help people. Money. It's just not good. Yeah, it's not. I mean? It's actually teachers are one of the most underpaid 
yeah. professions. And it's sad. I, I, it's and think about it. My parents were in teachers. They're paraprofessionals. Oh, that's even less than the actual Put it in a lot of work. It's less than the actual teacher. Still carrying the grunt. Oh, my that gosh. A teacher would carry in a different way. Yeah. So they're working really hard. I'm seeing that, and I'm also in my mind like, dang, I wish we had more. What, around so what age is this for you? Ten, ten, nine okay. to ten years. Four, fourth grade, so okay. like nine, ten years old. I remember being at the lunch table acting like we had money. Because somebody was like, yeah, man, I mean, y'all, y'all must have so much money, you, you know, talking about my parents because they think, oh, they work in the school system. And I'm like, nah, y'all, y'all don't even know. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm not saying we were just flat broke, but, like, life was. It was stretched. It seemed like y'all were stretched. But my, yeah. We yeah. were stretched, but, bro, I don't know anybody that budgeted, that budgeted money like my parents. They're the best budgeters I know. Really? Yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Could, they could go take a trip and be better, and be off, than when better they off than people with. With money and they don't make much. And how reason, do you how do you feel like that? How do you feel like growing up like that has affected you in your music? And like, uh, is that like? Because when I hear your music, I I hear a lot of hunger mm. and I hear a lot of like, um, I say this in a positive way, like, but I'm I'm gonna prove myself. Like I oh, I belong yeah. here. How do you feel like your upbringing catered to that energy in your music? Bro, it's it's the thing that. Hmm. You know, the thing that put me here. You know what I mean? Like it's obviously little the Lord, but He used a yeah. very used. Um, underdog type yeah. of um, upbringing. And so, I mean, to give context, like in middle school, I was you know I was wanting to make the basketball team, tried out every year, cut every year, really? and, and literally I was always that guy. Every time I tried out, this close to making it, like genuinely, like all the coaches were always on in leeway. Never made the team, even in high school. Really, that really put a put a pretty heavy chip so you, on my you, you shoulder. You never made the team in middle school, high school. Never, and I could hoop like genuinely. I've seen you. You people, actually you people that knew me, well, especially in that at that time. Now I haven't played in a long time. You know what yeah. I mean? But when I was playing consistently, people thought I was a shoe in to make it, and I never did. And I well, always no, so, wondered why. So you're saying sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade? You 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 tried seventh out grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade. You tried out. Four or five years in a row and got cut every, every year. time and every time I was Jeez. this close to making a team. What made you keep? Days didn't rock with you, bro. I see you play ball. That's crazy. What That's made? So what wild. made? What made you keep going back? You like? I love the game. You know what I mean? And, I think that, and I that was tells good. a lot about your character too. Just perseverance. Yeah, I mean, bro, I, I love the game and and I could play. It wasn't like, bro. It was like I, I was a say, scrub. But I will say where I'm from too, state championship caliber. Oh, didn't Kwame Brown come from Brunswick? Kwame Brown came from Brunswick, but okay. also, bro, Brunswick High. I mean, I'm not. I can't. Shout out Kwame Brown. Shout, shout out to Ballin. Kwame. <laughs> nah, nah, look, for me, I got respect for Kwame, bro. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, yo, he, he's a Kobe Brunswick. Don't, he, Kobe don't. <laughs> yeah. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe don't. All right, all right, Kobe that don't. Brunswick <laughs> stew ain't hitting over here in LA, bro. Yeah. It's a cold. It's a cold dish. Hey, look, Kwame played it's a cold over a world. decade. <laughs> Finally played over a decade, got his money. He did, he did. Put on for his family. Then he went on so. Instagram going Dang crazy. Bro. bro, he got <laughs> pooped on by Jordan and Kobe, bro. Yeah. Oh, but he had both his teammates. They were, he was on both teams. That's true. Here's what I will say. There's always two sides to the story. Hey, I man, know that. God so. bless. Hey, man. God bless. Now but having can... but having that mantle of like people like Kwame and, and you getting denied every year to get on the, on, on, on the game, you said it created a crazy chip on your shoulder. Oh, yeah. Do you, super. Did, when you first started making music... Did you put that chip on your shoulder as well? Like, oh, I'm gonna, I, like, I, I feel like a lot of your story that I've heard outside of this podcast and also on it right now, what you're saying is just you're just a natural underdog. I feel like yeah. a lot of people mm. kind of count you. Well, out. people don't know I was literally like I was a battle rapper who started freestyling in my school. Like Yo, that's what I was rapper. known for. Oh, that'd be so great. That it's, makes. I mean, I was known for that. Like people, man, so, I, I got people the see table. me come into this. And don't understand, they do not understand that I was the kid in the locker room, like, 92 and 2, like, in battle rap. Like, no, boy, I did not up. lose. Like, bro, <laughs> I and I don't say that in a cocky no, manner. I, I literally I, I, mean no, 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 no. I love hip-hop. And I, yeah. when I caught drift that I could spit, I was like, bro, I'm running with this. Where, that, where did that love for hip hop come from? Like, like where, did, uh, where, where did that start at? Like, It really started heavy for me in middle school. I got exposed to just... Amazing music, bro. That's amazing, bro. And, and I got exposed to both sides of the coin because when I started tapping into hip hop, like, you know, my parents were like, oh, no, like, what? Mm -hmm. Shoot. Not not scared, but just like, oh, we need to show them some stuff. So my uncle ended up 
telling my parents about Lecrae. And that's how I heard about Lecrae. But I was still, you know, like even when I was listening to Lecrae, I was also rocking with Wayne and Eminem. Yeah, for so, sure. I, I think, thought I think, Wayne was like the I a lot me and my friends. Wayne top five. We thought he at the time, I was like, this this is this is it. This nah. is what it looks like to be a rapper, right? No, nah, no. Nah, I think for the for the twenties, the the the, the twenties and the people in the twenties, Wayne is like their Jay Z. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I mo- most much respect. Um I think I would love to get into more about like your music journey, like yes. coming out of Brunswick, what lets you all. I think there's a lot to unpack, bro. I'm actually learning I'm, some stuff about you that I didn't know about. I'll be here all day. Which is so super dope. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, this is a 116 Life, Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I am your host, Ace Harris. This is my man. DJ Michael V. And we're here at Hovey going through the, cool. uh, the, the underdog story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sure. We're going to be right back after this little break. Tap in. Welcome back. What up, what up? Uh, this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris. It's my man. DJ Michael V. And we're here with the, you know what I'm saying, the underdog. I feel like we're going to stop Yo. saying that word eventually. Oh, nah. I, 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 I was tempted to say legendary, but the, but the story's still being built. Yeah, so I want to yeah, like... You're still on the journey. You're still on, still the, journey. on the journey. But I feel, like the, I feel like you, yeah, you know, Hovey, you are definitely walking in greatness, man, and... and, and and you know, living in it, man, breathing in it, and just, but Thank also you. maintaining a sense of humility with it. So that's fun to watch. So yeah, we was talking about um, on the last segment, just you know, Brunswick. You were saying about your story about being a freestyler. Yep. And I can actually relate because I've seen you, you met me at uh, I seen you. I I, I brought Hovey to an A three C show in Atlanta, uh, Ooh, a, a festival talk about showcase. It, Ace. Let, we're, we're, we, we're gonna we're gonna get back to how we met, but I, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right here and we'll walk it back a little bit. Yeah. I took Hovey to an A3C festival in 2018 before he signed with us. Got you. And I was kind of just building with scouting, him. scouting. I was scouting. He was, in the, he was in Atlanta, and I was like, yo, pull no up. No following at all. And I was like, just pull up. I had extra tickets. Come rock with me. Is I this mean, before I met you or after? Before. Bro, I mean, Maybe. it's like, I mean, like, I mean, long I'm hair, a teenager. Hovey, like, I'm a te- He's literally yeah, a teenager. That's crazy. And this A3C festival in Atlanta, there was a playback past the Ox moment at Patrick Studios, the legendary Patrick Studios, which is like Cash Money, Lil Wayne, a bunch of amazing records were made there. It's a room full of like the tastemakers and producers and artists in Atlanta. A lot of, a lot of like the on the cusp guys. Yeah. There's about 40 people in the room and it's like people are pulling up beats and dudes is freestyling, passing like the dynamic mic around the room. And I mean, people was like putting on I me. Mean, it's, it's, it's like mainstream, so it's not like it's not like your kingdom vibe. It's just like hip hop. And we in there being a light I'm building. And I got Hovey, who I only met like the second time in my life. And he's hanging with me in a room full of like black folk and hip hop yeah. and culture. Hovey basically finds his way to that microphone, cuts through the line and grabs the mic and starts freestyling, bro. To like in the moment on this like amazing trap be spitting like the most fire kingdom bars you've ever heard. Dang, with bro. no filter, with no no fear, and I was like, that moment taught me something about him that I thought was there, but it confirmed like, oh, he got that dog in he him. He got that dog in him. Ooh, and that's bro. and that you that's can't a special you, moment. You can't. can't teach create, that. You, you can't teach that. Can't teach that, bro. You looked at can't me. Can't teach it, baby. Because you, when we left that event, I remember you looked at me. You said something, bro. We was on like the sidewalk, You're like, bro, we're going. I think I think, I think I'm gonna remember that. Or it's like, like a documentary, yo. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I got. I said I have a video clip of it. We'll, we'll post it at the right time. Yeah. yeah. But like, um, I think I people know you had that video on you. Ace. I do. I still got it. I actually looked at it the other day. That is for real, amazing. for real. Like you was in Ace, the, is, Ace is in bed with his wife. She's sleeping. He's just like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> no, please, please discard the, the the white rapper analogies. But it was really like an eight mile moment, though. For nah, real, for sure. It was like, yeah. bro. But I think I think Mike Hovey, I think people, I don't know if you knew, people are probably want to know, like, where did he come from? And maybe that's important for people. So to, I actually yeah. heard about Hovey through Aklesso. Aklesso was gonna do a song with Hovey, I think, years and years ago. Oh, and he was like, "Bro, you gotta you gotta look at this cast. Yo, this dude is dope." And then you came to Zach Paradise's house uh, we to was record every week. Yeah, to record with Aklesso, and I met him, and I was like, "Oh, bro, you're super dope." This is like. Coconut head, uh, Hovey. <laughs> you know, like the little, yeah. the little, the little where chain. are you? Yeah. The little flip. <laughs> the little beaver flip. The little beaver flip. And uh, that's where I first met you. And I was like, yo, you like, 
you just had a a a, a, a grit a grit to you that I I really actually appreciate it. Like I can kind of tell, you know, because you because you could tell when people are fabricating things, and I and I 100. knew that you weren't fabricating what you the way you were rapping, and that's mm-hmm. like one thing I, I I love about like you as an artist. I feel like you're unapologetically where you're from, but that that's why I love you talking about. Yo, I didn't make the basketball team. Yo, I was raised in a trailer. I feel like all these things can be seen in society as negative, but I feel like those are the things that like chiseled you away into uh, where where you needed and who you needed to be at that time. You know what I'm saying? No, I did, bro. I did. Hmm. Like, Crazy. Yeah, that's. I, I mean, I feel like I, I'm just kind of going back in the memory of just how things got here, and I'm obviously, you know, talking about you know, our, our, with, with the 116 life, it's like faith, culture, music. And there's so many things that I feel like, you know, brought us here. But I, I think it'd be important for people to understand, like, the, the reason why you're sitting here and the reason why you have your music playing all over the world. Because it kind of started on a, a random t- 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 like Twitter DM. So I, I'll share a little bit how it happened and then how the Lord used it. And then I think it'd be good for you to kind of share your side, too. Because, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, some folks felt like, like who is this kid, bro? Like... We go get into the great it. white hope. <laughs> so this is 2018. This 2017? No, 2020. I started reach A and R. I try to make this kind of quick too, because it, it's this can literally take like 30 minutes. I'm gonna try to give the condensed version yeah. for those who are tracking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is 20. This is 20. Uh, I started reach at 2017 June 12th. Um, Dang, you been here that long? Yeah, yeah. Yo, congrats, bro. Hey man, you know what I'm saying? Great. Shout that's out, actually, shout, shout out the fire. That's shout that's, out the Lord, man. That's Just, dope. It, it changed my life in a lot of ways. So I'm, I'm, I am beyond grateful. And to all the people who've been tapping. You're part of history, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Crazy. I mean, I'm part of, you know. Dang, 2017. Yo, think of all the albums you helped A&R. Dang. That's, that's different. That's different. That, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's yeah, a great ahead. conversation. That's, no, that, yeah, that's, that's kind of wild. I'll come now back Now that I think that. about it, it's kind of wild. That's kind of wild. Yo, I'm going to let you rock. My man's I'm got a resume, rock. man. I'm not going to let you not know that you're that you're a GOAT, but that uh, I'm, I'm going to let you carry on. The that's resume. Crazy. That's crazy. I'm just I'm just I'm just walking with him, bro. So 2017, I think it was like, I started in June. I believe I, I was always telling people on socials like, yo, hit me up, send me your music. I was more accessible then than I am now, but I am still pretty success, accessible. I just have a team to help me out. So, so people sift would, through the BS. Sift through the, well, sift through the not so good. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. So I think people were sending me music, DMs, Instagram, yeah. Twitter. I don't even check my Twitter DM like that, to be honest. And Twitter took- And this kid, Christopher Hovey at the time, DM me. And I remember liking the music but it was like i heard something there that i thought was compelling and i and, and my note to him was because i i like heard the music first and i saw your profile i was like oh he's like a white kid he's got sauce he's wavy yep. and i said something to him i was like you're dope your voice is dope your tone i think i want to hear you be more authentic with your perspective because it sounds like you're still trying to find who you are is that is that how the conversation went i can't yeah uh it was that and it was also just challenging vocally being authentic too Oh, your tone more so. The music we was, I mean, I was around was just. Well, I mean, you from Wick, you from Brunswick, so I yeah. Mean, just, but like hip hop, like Migos and yeah, Georgian music. So For sure. From Georgia, so that's, I was trying to make that same stuff. And at the time, I think it was not very authentic. Well, you were like 17. Yeah, I was just figuring it out. SoundCloud 18, age, like, yeah. hey, we all just figuring it out together. You just said something, SoundCloud I was age. listening to Yachty, like, I was really listening and so artists like that really kind of gave my generation like a perspective of let's just try stuff and throw, yeah. throw paint on the wall you know what I mean but I, I heard something in your forget honestly I don't want to take too much credit there's some moments you probably can relate to this too where you see something and you see where they could be yes it's like it's but it's, it's almost like you're not seeing it. God's almost just revealing it to you. Hundred percent. I, I get. I, that happens to me a lot. It's like because I think some people would go out, like you, to be on the to kind of do this right here. They like to like, yo, I saw, I called. I, I'm like, honestly, yes, yes, and no. I, I mean, I saw something on through your voice and tone, and I, I've actually and, said this. And and also you heard you had heard my beats. That was the other. Oh, yeah, you was making beats. That's like right. Soul samples. And- yeah, he was making beats, bro. So I heard. I mean, I've said this about a couple. I've said this about RG too. Did not know that. I've, yeah. I've said this about a few. What I Probably saw. I should tap back in, honestly. But yeah, you definitely. Do you imagine? Yo, you get a, you get more a, points on your records. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, For real. I remember. Um, I've said this about. This is no disrespect to any of the artists who I've worked with. This is just 
I'm just being honest about what I saw, what God revealed to me. I, I had a certain uh, confirmation that I felt like was spiritual about you and what up RG specifically. Mm-hmm. Where it was like, it's not that I saw y'all. Culture God just kind of revealed something like, yo, yeah. him. And, I, and so you can probably put on this A in our hat. You can ask a lot of questions. But it was like, I just, I just felt like there was something there. So fast forward, that was like a year of us sending music back together, me being kind of distant. Me being a little like I was kind of big bro and you're like, yo, Edge, I can't hide. And then And I didn't even know you. I didn't know if you was rocking with me the long way. <laughs> you for for you, you was, you know, seeing like, okay, there's potential. But for me, I'm receiving it all like, okay, you know, he It probably I'm, hurt a little bit. No, nah, it was just like, all right. But I feel like it's not nothing you haven't handled. I mean, based off your story, I feel like that's just adding adding yo, to Yo, my man was so persistent though, to your point. He Perseverance. Kept, he would DM me like three or four times. There'll be a lot of like blanks, and I'd be like, okay, I tap back in. I ain't care. He didn't care. And then we, I, I think you sent me this one song. I think it was p- called Public Service Announcement. <laughs> PSA. Dun, dun, dun. I know, Hovey and Hovey. Let's go, Hovey. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it's called PSA. And, and wasted time. Wasted Allow time. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My, My name, name is, is H. Ooh, you to, to the, the OV. Oh! <laughs> yo, I feel like the New Don't Yorkers and hip hop like heads yo. are feeling real. Like, yo. they be like, real, feeling I'm real. Get crucified They're going to kill us, fam. Yo, we, need, we, we need to fall back. We need it's, to all fall. it's all good. It's all good. Shout out Jay. Shout out. Hope like Rafa. Goal. The GOAT. Hope like Nisi. Woo! Shout out Lano. Shout out Lano. Um, so, so, I heard that song and I just instantly. I, I rallied up the troops. I rallied up Ben, Lecrae, Marcus Hollinger. The GOAT. I saw, and it was, it was like, them three specifically were interested. We saw something there. You had no real release history. That was, that it was, was kind of like, yeah. My f- uh, second It was time, a big question mark. For sure. Yes. But that was my second time professionally recording. Because, <laughs> professionally. What happened was, my best friend, his name is Bailey. People, cool. people that really like my core fans know Bailey because they, you know, see him maybe on my posts or this and that. Um, but we've been rocking since we were teenagers, and he was my like manager at the time, my friendager in a way. Like, just he was just doing anything he could to try to help us go in the city. And we we drove to Jacksonville, Florida, and he paid for that session. Hmm. And so every time I think about that story, I always try to take a step back and remember I wouldn't have even got to do it I mean we were teens he paid for that like and we we recorded with this dude named Paul Lipinski who worked with like Paul that's cause he he's... was legit like very legit um and yeah man we cut those records and on the way home you hit a, you hit me back Are you... that's when you that's when you sent me your number you ain't never sent me your number until no I had your number from Zach Paradise you go like from a you know, mutual kind of, he vouched for me, but it, those two songs, like, you was like, I knew you was engaging me. Like, nah, this is, then you called me the next day when I was at work in the library at college. And I'm like on the phone. I remember that. I'm on the phone at work. Like, probably shouldn't have been in the library, like taking the whole joint. Like, yeah, bro, you know. Hey, yo. Man, that's, I, I, I forget, I guess, on this. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Mike, he'll be a, uh, in the library, man. Yo. This is the call of my life. Yo. Yo. He, he's image. That was how it was. That's how I was, to be honest. Man. And I took it, though, because I knew I got to take this call. Bro. So I know this story. This, this is so... I'm going to try to speed through because I want to get to where you are now. It's yeah. hard to get through. But I brought you around Reach. People, I was trying to share the music. And this is not... This is like what it was. There was the, the office, the label. I mean, it was... Not everybody was rocking with it. It was a question mark. It was a huge question mark. Um, I think visually, aesthetically, you were still fine. I had no visual. <laughs> I didn't even have a style of the way I dress. The thing is, I've heard Jack Harlow talk about it. He didn't either. You do, I didn't even. Bro, yeah, all was, I did was I was, I was hungry just to make music. Like that's I wore yeah. baller shorts. That was my style, honestly. From baller shorts and t. You're a baller. You had a <laughs> you had like a Space Jam shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And bro, that <laughs> yo, yo, the yo, Space yo, Jam the joint. Classic joint. Somebody told me, I'll never forget. That in was college, the uniform, bro. They were like, bro, you look like, like bro, you look like a middle schooler that just started yeah, figuring you know, out you his fashion. At Route Twenty One. It was like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I mean, they you, respected it. They was like, all right, you okay, getting there. But you were so confident, but like not 
I didn't know. I was naive. I I like that about you. But what people don't know is where I was at spiritually. You were okay. Mm, That's the part I was. So you, I mean, you literally moved to Atlanta, worked at Publix for like ten dollars an hour, scrubbing toilets, and was like my cousin. Shout out Elizabeth. Wouldn't be doing this. Like you, 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 you you weren't. We we didn't promise you with signing. We was just like, yo, let's just work on some music. You actually cut it off, bro. Hey, bro. Perseverance. Come on, bro. Come on. Just the word. What people don't know though is Ace cut it off. Like I moved to Atlanta. Anyways, and Ace was like, Ace was like, nah, you're too close. Nah, was... No, like, he was like, bro, I'm too busy. I cannot, I don't have time to develop an artist. Yeah. I was all right, you know what I mean? It mm-hmm. hurt. I remember I was at everything. Mm-hmm. And then I still moved, bro. God I had it on my heart. I moved. I linked with Scott Free, started, you know, serving. And then um, Ace saw that I was here and was like, oh, man, like, he's still here. Yeah. Hmm. And then I was, I, I made Broken Heart. God gave me the vision for Broken Heart before I even moved and made it with Zach. Mm. And then, yep. And on that song, on that album was a song called Motions. There was two songs. It's Ready or Not and Motions. Motions was a song of your testimony working at public scrubbing Country toilets, store. like going through the motions and trying to seek after God. Yeah. And we had a plan. This is where people probably ding me or reach or have... There was some chatter. We're going to get into the next some more. Chit chat. There was like, yo, people saying, like, who's this industry plant? But when the summer playlist for the, the summer Indi- playlist dropped, summer 19. Industry plant. There was a summer 18 playlist, but this was the Crazy. first time the summer playlist was curated with like outside of reach artists. Yeah. And we had a, we definitely wanted to like pitch you on the playlist and kind of see how it would track. We were going to pit Ready or Not on that first. Shout out to Ben Washer. Go. He just knew that. I don't think that's the song to like test this new artist that we're interested in on because it can get lost in the shuffle. Let's pick something that has more depth and show his heart and substance. And at the last minute, bro, we switched to motions. And I feel like that record changed everything for you and for us and started your journey as like a development act that we would end up signing. So yeah, and we, we can get more about did. this on the next segment. I know, we, I know we've been tracking along with time, but... Yeah, the underdog story, man. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I am your host, Ace Harris. I'm here with DJ Mike LV, Hovey. We're going through the motions. We're going through the story. And uh, yeah, this is this is definitely uh, a special one. So yeah, be back with, after the break. Yo, what up? What up? We uh, This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I am your host, Ace Harris. Here, my man. DJ Mike LV. And the legendary in the making. Hovey, what's going yeah. on? I feel like I put the actor there for the OGs don't Asterisk. come for it. But nah, for real, this this is a great, this is a great like underdog story. We tapping right into just facts about your heart, your work ethic, your ministry, the come up. And I think there's parts about the come up which are beautiful in terms of you, you know, ascending to where you are, fighting to get where you are. And I feel like there's some hurdles yeah. that we can talk through. Cause I feel like yeah. Well, you share a little bit in your music, but you really say face a lot publicly and musically about stuff you went through. Yeah. Not because you're yeah. trying to like. No, I'm not trying to conceal it. Honestly, I would love to talk about it on uh, records, but I, but I. There's a way going on. There's, there's a integrity to have towards people because that. those are my, that's family. Yeah. And family has. You mean like don't go to us. Twitter on. No. Don't go to Twitter to harbor grievances that you no. haven't like texted your friend about. No. Oh, go, don't, don't, don't sneak this on songs. I have a line in this song coming where it's like, try to lay it at his feet. He said, fix it with your brother. It's like, you know, you can try to, you know, come to God and do all this stuff for him, but you got to make it right with your brother first. Mm. And, I, and I think for me, I would be doing the opposite of that if I got on record and started yeah. rapping about certain things that I feel like could be... Mm. You know, is that your girl's tour or world tour? Yeah, I mean, like you can't come to the altar for communion if you haven't break break like broke bread with your brothers type vibe. You know, hey, yo, it. I need a full stop, bro. Ace has been dropping one liners for the last eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's going crazy. No, it's, 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 I'm just, just literally, you could literally splice clips the whole yeah, time. Yeah, literally of, of Ace. Bro, you just have a whole year of content. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but um, so so motions drops. I'm, I'm just walking through the story. I mean, I remember. Okay, Motion Drops, summer 2019. I mean, that playlist was up. It, yeah. it really ca- catapulted a, a resurgence in the Christian hip-hop space that I don't want to... It's not me taking credit for it. It's me like... I'm, I'm almost like an uncle seeing like my, my nephews and nieces like come together 
It was it was it was really special. Dope. And, I, and I feel like the scene was just energized and we signed you, bro, literally like after that song. But so what you don't know was internally, we had like some we had you were on like we were like tracking like if this song hits a certain metric or a certain type of Stamp it. This this is the business of music that people don't want to hear about, which is just facts. It's not us. We we like this artist. We believe in it. You gotta make sense. I need to see the data. We want to see the data. We want to know what better yet. We want to see what the people Crunch respond the numbers. to. And and it was like your song with no backstory. No, it was just it was it was crushing. And we it was like, okay, this yeah. is it. And we and we we signed you in August, which is like quick. Yeah, it officially signed in August. We went probably a month or two. Yeah, of we didn't announce it. Okay, went to, it, it was. I mean, we. So it, I, I got the call in the summer. Yeah, in like June. Like, when'd you get jumped in? Oh, uh, well. Well, that's a whole nother. <laughs> that that should have. Okay, let's talk let's about that. It. Yeah. So, got signed. Good timing. I regret a lot of things that I did wrong. I want to publicly apologize. As it's your big good. brother, bro, as an A and R, because there is a sensitivity to the one one six artist roster community that I yeah. severely overlooked and didn't prepare you for or prepare them for, and I pretty much it's almost like we adopted a foster kid into the family and threw him in a room with some brothers that he never got to meet before, and that's what it felt like. And I literally threw him into the chat, and the artists were blindsided about Dude, um, who's this guy. We didn't, not that we have to get approval from our artists to sign. Not at all. But you, you want to do stuff in a way that is honoring and, and also like, it, it's like, with, like, it's like with dogs, you know what I'm saying? Like if you have a dog and you get a puppy, you can't just, you can't just put the puppy in the dog space because then the dog's going to not like the That's puppy. That's it. That's you it. You got to like ease them into it. It's yeah. just like a shared space, you know? Yeah. And, and, and what, I mean, Reach and 116 is built on such a family. I mean, Cray, T. Dot. Trip, I mean, that was like family. You know what I mean? That yeah. started in a, ty- a certain type of way. So yeah. So like yeah, I get it. We we signed and obviously it wasn't public yet. We're working on music. You're in the artist chat, and I mean things are literally tense yeah. because there wasn't a lot of. It wasn't like people weren't was, rocking with you. It was people were like felt like they were kind of blindsided. It was and, really tense, bro. and they weren't really sure who you were, and they felt like they had to adjust to something that they weren't privy to. Like, it was kind of thrown on them. And you honest at the same time, on your side, you were kind of like... I was hurt, man. I mean, you were in studios. It was just kind of like, ah, oh, people... It was just a weird yeah. relational tension. I mean, t- tell sure. me how you felt in oh, that moment. Bro. Um, I was I was hurt and felt... Definitely struggled with feeling rejected. Keep again, Think about it. I got cut from the team. But think about the background. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Even you when I grew like up, it's a theme when I grew life. up in church, I I grew up with a lot of people like that had more money because it was more closer to the island. It was downtown, but people from the island would come. Rejection, mm. because like we weren't getting invited to go to lunch with people. We weren't. You know what I mean? Mm. Like my my family wasn't getting invited to that stuff, and I carried that into my um mm. initial, you know, welcoming to reach and and it. You know, it affected me, man. Like it, I definitely felt very rejected because I love. I looked up to these dudes. I was so excited because I grew up listening to to these dudes, and was blown away by um just the fact that, like, dang, I thought this was gonna be a warm welcome, and now it's like apparently I'm like some type of not threat, but like um I'm outside. No, that 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 would be a good word. That'd be it. Yeah. You're not. I would apparently, say. I'm somebody that's not supposed to be here. And it was a cold transition, poorly led by me, honestly. And I have regret. Hey, you're I forgiven, mean, though, man. So we signed them, and we were gonna we were gonna do an announcement with everything with a rollout. Yeah. And shout out to somebody who I want to give credit for, even though, you know, things have not been what they used to be. Me and Marcus Hollinger went to Miami to do some work with Gavi. Um, mm-hmm. And he just expressed some of his, um, it wasn't negativity. He expressed to me personally how he felt like when you bring in new artists to the roster or around that the, the, the current team needs to be brought into that decision from a relational standpoint. He was right. And he challenged me in a way that 
me and Marcus went. It was I, I, I flew back with a heavy heart, and we had an internal meeting here, and we basically paused your whole rollout for two months. Well, and sat you down and said, "We got to just." At a, at a breakfast, we we did a breakfast. Me and my um, good Shout brother out Scott Free, Scott Free yeah. was right by my side. Goat. With all. The goat, man. I remember feeling so that was heavy like, to tell you that news. Like, hey, we had these oh, plans. I thought I was going to, I'm going to be real. I thought I was going to just get snipped. That's what I think. I yeah, thought, because I, I was I like. The same. Really? You, you you felt like that too? Like, what? No, no, no. I, I'm not, I felt like that. If I was in his position, okay. I would feel the same. Sure. So I'm, a, I'm a natural overthinker. Well, because what happened is they were like, hey, we want you to meet these metrics. Yeah. Like, they were like, okay, we're going to take a pause. Because. On the other side, the relational stuff, it wasn't just that. The creative side wasn't ready either. The music wasn't ready. The image, the brand, nothing was ready. Mm. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I went and tried to shoot a video. It was awful. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And um, they are like, look, we just want you to meet these metrics, try to hit this amount of followers and hit this and hit that. And I was really frustrated because I was like, come on, man. I just signed a contract, and now I'm having to earn mm. That's real. I, I, I remember I showed. Yeah, I, really, I knew yeah. deep down it was a rela the relational stuff was leading the way, and I remember sure. I would pry. I, I would pry a lot. Like, man, like, is it? Come on, bro. Is it the relational stuff? I think yeah. I mentioned it lightly, but not strong enough. I, yeah. I, I remember I showed Michael V Studio A the Ready or Not video at the time that didn't come out, and bro, I, I showed you the video, Michael V. I don't know if you remember your response, but I was literally embarrassed for how it was coming, how things were going. Tell me what you said to me uh, when you first saw that video. I don't know if you remember. I don't remember. You was basically I like, crazy though. I mean, you basically said, "Yo, it's just he's not ready. He's not ready." Like it was like a, f I knew it in my heart. Oh, I know. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's stung, I bro. Yeah, I was like, he's not ready, and it's not ready because this is when you were in your awkward stage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Like this is when you were kind of like he was very quiet in a way and didn't know how to like like the hip hop mannerisms and like the things. It was kind of yeah. it was foreign in a way. And I remember watching it and I was just like, this really is not it at all. It, just, it, it feels like you're like, it feels like you're trying to do something and it's not natural. It didn't feel that's the it didn't feel natural. I think you were you were like 19, you were so young, bro. Yeah, you were yeah. young, bro. It's, it was it was really to be I honest. I didn't know how to appear on a camera. On a camera, because you, you, yeah. you, you I knew you, how to freestyle and it was a, yeah. you, you was walking into a whole new world yeah. of artistry and development that we probably come up didn't include a lot of artists that pop off or have something happen young have videos attached to it or TikTok. I didn't have that side. Yeah, you were yeah, just like, I'm just going to rap. But yeah, man, um, I mean, so it took some time. I mean, there was even some stuff relationally with the roster, things I know that... I just think people felt threatened. That that That's that's boy, what you said is just facts. And to be... Okay, let's, let's also say this, man, like, not to address the elephant in the room, but, you know, as a as a... Address it. As a sure. black A&R, as a person who's black and hip-hop to the core, mm. bringing on a... I remember someone said, well, we, when we signed you, someone said, oh, you finally... That's the, the, the next white rapper since Andy Mino. Like, it was like a clear yeah. thing, right? And I remember feeling like, oh, okay. People are kind of side-eyeing me a little bit that Ace brought on this, like, no-named white kid. Kid, kid's raw. Do you know how, did, how, did he get, how did he get the shot? You, you know, know what I'm saying? I think it is? Is that... Is that is is that you you were a white rapper and also it was like what it felt like was this is not true. I'm saying what it felt like. What I'm what I'm about to say is not is not a fact. It's what it felt like. Is that we have all these artists, they're not cutting it. So let us sign a white rapper to mm -hmm. make it happen. That's not true. Ooh, That's not your intention. Sure. But what it like where that tension came from was Yo, you think we can't do it? Like, you had to get somebody else? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, Whoa. obviously it's not true. But it's like, for, for, it, it felt, felt like a... It feels that way. But, like that, but that, that, that's really what it was. It was like, yo, like, mm. yo, you think we can't do it? To so be you honest, get this person with, to come? Were those some of the comments, uh, conversations in the group chats, like, around the space? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Like, let's, let's get a white kid up here to get these... Get these, get these. To get these streams, baby. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's bring what Lecrae lost back. Hey, let's talk about it, man. I, so I'm I, here for it. How, how how's that make you feel, honestly? I mean, be real, be real, be real. I, I, so I was gonna say. I mean, it grieves me that all that happened. Yeah, you know I mean, and I. What I hate the most is that I didn't get a chance to show people who I was. 
They already labeled you. Like they I was even in, meet I you. am hip hop. That, that's what they ain't know. And I'm mm. like, bro, talk. And mm. you know, that's the part that I had definitely had a a chip on my shoulder of like, bro, y'all are assuming that I'm your typical white CCM act. And I am far, far, far from that. Mm. The music I was making at the time was me exploring. Keep in mind, I never had made music like motions in my life. Ask Ace. Most of the music I was making was just hip hop, like with not, without rock influence. It was, I just tried it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know that even that part mm. played a role too, because they're like, oh, so is this like some type of Juice World, Post Malone mm. type situation? Which, once again, was just figuring myself out. But I'm like, bro, couldn't have been farther from the, the truth. And that's one of the things that really hurt me. Um, yeah. You know, it. I hate that that's how it happened. But at the end of the day, man, like, I have a stronger relationship with everybody because of it. Like, and yeah. there's a mutual respect, you know. It, it taught me so much. We grew from it. And I, I would echo that. And one thing I will say, too, that stood out that brought us here because I'm gonna end on a high note because this this is actually gonna have to be a two part series, but we got. We, I want to keep it pushing. I, I, I we yeah, need, we need to get this we, out. We, I ain't gonna lie. We, we can't we can't we can't get to we where can't we harp at. on this. We're, we're still in like season two on like a five part episode. <laughs> we, we're not we we ain't even got to like beautiful cancel at all. I think that's a whole nother. But this is like I think this backstory is important. Would you, would you say kind of? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, but I I I just felt like you know, um, that junk taught me so much, uh, how to like. And I feel like one thing that stood out through all this tension and development and your backstory to come up, which people can see and hear through the music, is your heart for the Lord, which is the, 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 the lifeblood, the fiber of what we do and why we do it. Through all the fumbles on my end, the miscues, the cultural insens- insens- mm. insensi- uh, sensitivities that we, things that were fumbly. I ain't gonna lie, it was, there was, there was, there was, a, there was a conviction about specifically me, Lecrae, Ben, Marcus, that we, I think spiritually, we felt like your heart and voice for the Lord reflecting in your music was so uh, needed at the time, white or not, where we just, we just locked in. And I, I thought people felt like, maybe you could share like how that, your relationship with God brought you through to even to be able to have like a growing career now. You know what I'm saying? Bro, yeah, I just... I knew I was here for a reason, mm. and I, I once again, I, I had dreamed of signing the Reach because that's that music fed me so much, and um, I, uh, yeah, I, I knew I needed to be here. So, being here wasn't the issue. It didn't make me not want to be here. It was just the relational aspects that, hurt. yeah. But like I, like spiritually, I knew in my in my soul, right. I'm like, yeah, that's what I, that's what I got to do. And honestly, it was like, I mean, I I knew that. I let me not say bump what they think because I did care what people thought. Yeah, like like I did care about people's opinions and, um, like those are people I looked up to. Like I said earlier, but man, God like mm. used people around me, specifically like Ace and Scott and Marcus, to encourage me. And remind me of what he was doing. <laughs> and even like in my heart, I just felt like there were some even prophetic things that the Holy Spirit had in me hmm. um, that I knew that he wanted to do. And so I knew that I was just a drop in the bucket, but was going to be a part of that. And so I, that's why, I, you know, I stayed the course. Um, yeah. Hey, that's, that's, man, that's, I feel like there's so much that has been said. I mean, Shout out to where God's taking you, bro. Me and you have been tapped in, bro, in the trenches. We got so much that we're still doing. I mean, I, we would need like a whole like two episodes to even get to. This is great. But I think just learning, people getting to see, bro, your heart, your story, your journey, and some of the, the trials that you went through to, to be where you are. Mm. And I think it's just, it's part of the story, which in a lot of ways, no pun, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like that tension, that struggle, all those things are they're beautiful and I just wanted to, to leave on that note man um, this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio Sirius Channel 154 appreciate everybody tapping in Hovey sharing his underdog story um, and Michael v tapping in with us man I just want to um, leave on that note man be encouraged 
wherever you are, whatever you got going on, like your 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 trials, your testimony, your struggles are to shape you into a beautiful story persevere. that points that points to God that you can persevere through. So, thank you for tapping in. That's it for today. Thank Catch you. y'all later.